This trip is about Medellin. Medellin was one of my favorite places to ever visit. The weather there is gorgeous, eternal spring. Everything started because of Nav going to Medellin. I made a video, said that I was gonna start making professional videos. Back then, I wasn't very equipped with all the equipments that I have now, and the team that I have now. He met me, he wanted to bring me on, he found out I was Colombian. He's like, yo, let's, let's go to Medellin together. So when you arrive in Medellin, the airport is above a mountain, and then you go through the mountain, which is the South America's largest tunnel. I don't know, I think it's like five kilometers to 10 kilometers long. That's what it is, and as soon as you go into Medellin, you see the city view, it's gorgeous, it's so beautiful out there. That city, Medellin, went through a lot of trauma because of Pablo Escobar. Back in the day, Pablo Escobar had a gang, it was the Medellin cartel. Medellin was a city that was very dangerous. I'm not saying that Pablo Escobar himself went and killed our families, but because of all that shit that went down with him, Every single family that lived in Medellin from the years 1975 till like the beginning of the 90s, we lose somebody. My uncle was the first one to get killed. Got hit by a bomb that was put in La Macarena, the bullfire arena. And then my dad got shot three times in his face, all the way at the end of this valley, in Bejo, in the middle of Ashura. A lot of the people that died out here between the 80s and the 90s, they didn't have anything to do with the cartels, with the mafias. It was just people that was in the middle. This will tell us the places where the bomb were exploded in Medellin, and also the dates. Johnny is straight up gangster. When he's also a Medellin cartel survivor. Because he really grew up in the thick of it, in the neighborhood where Pablo Escobar grew up. Who else would be better to hear these stories from than from him, from someone who lived it? He showed us Pablo Escobar's house in Medellin and he showed us a monument. This is where the first bombs went off. This building was abandoned for over like 30 years. A lot of us, when we were growing up, before they allow us to go inside the bars, to go inside the clothes eh, or the TV bars, you know, we used to come out here. Fridays from school, what, oh, what are we gonna do? Oh, let's go to the Monaco building. We used to come in here, break inside the building, go all the way to the top and break the night there. Probably suck my first titties out here. This, this specific video is about the Alcatraz jail, which is the jail, supposed jail that Pablo Escobar built for himself. It's built on a mountain, it's called the Indus Mountains. It is very far in the mountain. To get to that mountain, you have to go through a, a path. It's a one way in and one way out. This is the cathedral, the place that Pablo Escobar built up for himself, his brother, and another 30 members from the Medellin cartel. This is the supposedly jail that doesn't look like a jail, it's more like a resort. The reason that this place is called a cathedral is because of that church over there, which Pablo also built it, not because he was a religion person, but because of his mom. His mom was a school teacher. In case she wanted to come with the other school teacher or the kids for the service, there was always two priests right there to attend them. In this place, a lot of shit happens. People got killed, chopped down in pieces, buried all around this place. In this place, there were epic parties, two weeks parties in which the narcos would bring 70 girls and have them running butt naked all over this place between cheerleaders, TV reporters, and a lot of virgin girls. Pablo Escobar used to hire the two professional soccer teams from Medellin to come and play right here. He decided not to let his family, not to let uh, his wife, mother, and sisters come inside this jail. So he built the visiting room. For any jail, a visiting room should not be bigger than this. But remember, this is not any jail. This was Pablo Escobar jail. So Pablo Escobar built his visiting room right next to the jail which is stupid huge because his visiting room got seven rooms, water fountain, soccer field, part for the kids, ATV tracks, panoramic view of the entire valley. So even though Pablo's family lived 20 minutes down these hills, every time they came, Pablo and Roberto would get out of the jail, go over there, spend the day with their family, barbecue and party or whatever, and then coming back at the end of the day, this building right here used to be Pablo's discotheque inside the jail. This discotheque have also a happy ending rooms. There's only one picture of Pablo Escobar behind bars with a Russian hat, and he took it inside one of the happy ending rooms inside the disco. This building was a recreation room, and inside this building there were pool tables, pinball tables, football, arcade games. 
When Doña Armelda, Pablo's mom, passed away, the remaining brothers and sisters of Pablo Escobar gathered like most of the religious things and they brought it inside this building. That's why they locked the doors because some of these things cost a lot of money. People will take it knowing who it belonged to because, you know, in the black market, it costs a lot of money. The world started down there. Right next to the heliport is a water tank. After Pablo Escobar decided to kill the Galeano brothers, they drowned them down there in a water tank. The next day, they put the bodies right under this structure because Pablo Escobar has cells. This was a man in jail locking people up. Right through here, Pablo Escobar escaped with his brother and 13 other members from the Medellin cartel. After Pablo Escobar escaped this place, he was never seen again till the day he got killed. When Pablo Escobar escaped, it was about four o'clock in the morning, he receives a call from the inside. When Pablo Escobar receives the call, they wake everybody up, and I mean, they start going down this trail, all the way to the end of it. Before Pablo Escobar built this place, they set up a cave on that side of the mountain with running water and electricity just in case they needed to escape, which they did one year and three months later. They were supposed to be here for 10 years. Since Colombia is mostly a Catholic country, also the Sicarios and the assassins were hired. They also Catholics too. That's why they believe in images, statues, religious things. Right here, there was a statue of the Virgin Mary that we call La Virgen de los Sicarios, the Sicarios Virgin. Assassins or Sicarios back then belonging to the Medellin cartel, they would come up here and ask the Virgin Mary for favors. Virgin Mary, I need to kill two enemies here or there, or I need to put a bomb here or there. Please make sure that you grant me with the ability to leave the place. Make sure that every bullet that busts out of my gun hits the target. If anyone is around there and they got legs, they cannot catch me. If they got hands, they cannot touch me. They got eyes, they cannot see me. It was some crazy prayers. After they done some killing or doing whatever it is that they came for, they would come and buy these plates. This retirement home is now run by a Catholic priest. So he removed most of the plates that were on this wall because they were like very violent messages from part of the Sicarius. But they left a few ones, I don't know why, like this one. Thank you, Holy Virgin, for the favors and the protection. Narcos and Sicarios back there were crazy because they really thought that they were getting holy help to kill somebody and getting away with it. Not everybody come up to this point, you know, but I grew up out here, so I know these mountains like the palm of my hand. Johnny decided we should go for a little hike in the mountains, you know. So we're almost up this mountain, eh? Yeah. <laughs> These guys signed me up for some crazy hike. There's like a natural tunnel right here to get down to the lake. So we're not even at the main part yet. We got to climb up a little bit more. You're literally climbing up and down those mountains without ropes, without any kind of harnesses. Like truly the hike experience of a lifetime right here. I made it all the way there. It was super rewarding. <laughs> the water was very cold, surprisingly. But the falls were beautiful. This journey was really incredible. Yeah, I highly recommend that you guys go to Medellin, get a tour from someone there. We of course recommend Johnny. Johnny was the one that really motivated me to tell these stories, to talk about the journey that we had in this tourism. He's almost like a brother to us now. I believe if you guys ever decide on going to Colombia, especially Medellin, do contact Johnny. Johnny is gonna be your number one help. He will take you to restaurants, to local tour spots, to local areas. Anything you wanna do, that guy is the link for you. And we'll leave the link for his information underneath so you guys can obviously feel free to contact him if you guys are planning on your next journey. This is Johnny on the camera, man. I think I might hire him for my new cinematographer. For Medellin Project, he'll shoot all the music videos. So watch out. We're taking over Medellin, guys. It starts right here. 